So, for the past month or so, I've been having a glaring issue with my Ender 3 V3. In the last video, the issue was over-adhesion. Extreme over-adhesion. Ooh. Holy crap. This guitar pick is just welded. I am just folding this thing up right now, and because I am just wrenching this thing up right now. And that was most likely due to a combination of the bed material that came with the printer and simply how the bed leveling process is working. Unfortunately, these assumptions are not just the end of the story. I recorded many clips of my journey trying to fix this issue, so instead of trying to just piece them together and then show you that, I'm in an effort to try and make the video a little shorter, more interesting, I'm going to summarize what I tried and try and tell you about what worked, what didn't, what kinda did, kinda didn't. Before we start, every 3D printer issue is typically a little different to the next. So some of the fixes that didn't work for my printer may work for yours. So let's start at the start. The issue that started the whole thing was the over-adhesion. It was on the stock build plate, which was shown at the end of the first video. I started with no additives and a simple wipe down cleaning with alcohol, and the result has already been stated. The print was impossibly stuck down to the printer due to the print being so flat, so I had to heat up the build plate to make the print more malleable and bendy, and eventually I was able to pry off the print, however, it was mangled in the process. I was informed in the last video that this method of removal could be bad for the printer or the print bed, though I wasn't informed why exactly. Another thing that I was informed of was that if you use hairspray or glue on, this, on that type of build surface, um, it not only helps with the adhesion but with the disadhesion because it acts as a separating layer that will dry up or, you know, it, separa it just separates it. I didn't try any of that because I'm kind of in belief that if I'm using one, a textured build surface, and two, an auto bed leveling system, that I shouldn't have to use additives. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid additives altogether because I want to one, simplify the setup process for prints, and two, and remove the cost of the additives, even if the cost is low. Overall, if I can get away with it, I prefer not to use them. The next solution I tried was raising the Z-offset by 0.10. The result was a successful print and a clean peel from the plate, however, the first layer lines were, were under-extruded looking and ugly. This under-extrusion also resulted in small holes running through the entire print. It's possible that this solution could have fixed my issue if I had moved the Z-offset in even smaller increments. The next solution I tried, working off of the last one, was I upped the initial flow rate in the slicer. This resulted in, once again, over adhesion. Though after some scraping, I was able to actually get the print off without having to heat up the bed. The first layer quality was better, but still had rough and visible lines with porous cavities. Additionally, the printer was having trouble printing the entire logo on the pick. It's also in this clip that I mention if the first layer wasn't turning out so bad that the rest of the print was actually turning out amazing and the rest of the layers turned out perfectly. It's also in this clip that I mention that for my the model that I'm printing, the guitar picks, I really wanted a smooth surface for that first layer, which I hope kind of explains why some of the decisions were made and why certain things were done, certain things weren't, and my overall logic for how I carried on throughout this video. The next attempt was updating the firmware. The firmware was updated from 1.0.1 .1 to 1.0.4, so three versions behind logically. I didn't update the screen firmware because to access the micro SD you have to take the screen off of the printer. I forgot that you can simply pull up on the screen and take it off of the stand, so I assumed that you'd have to unscrew the whole thing, which is what I did when I did update it. Some additional statements on that subject. First of all, the screen update didn't seem to actually do anything or change anything. And I feel that it's important to reiterate that it takes micro SD. This is different from the main part of the printer or what the printer was provided with, which was a full size SD. So, in order to update your screen firmware, you're going to have to either buy a micro SD or scavenge one from another printer if you have that luxury. With all that being said, let's get back to the main topic. Because of the firmware update, I re-leveled the bed, expecting to get more accurate results. 
the, they, the results weren't accurate, but they were certainly different. Every time I had leveled the bed, there was one glaring issue with mine. The top right corner was always shown as drooping or dipping. However, in this leveling, it showed the bed being very level with some minor dipping along the right edge, except for that top right corner, and some raising in the bottom left corner, which persisted throughout all the rest of the levelings throughout my process of, doing, of working with this printer. When I did this print, I enabled the calibration setting, which most likely undid the false reading for the print, or at least let's hope it did. Some things of note here are there were little bits and specks of plastic adhered to the bed. This most likely happened because of the calibration with the nozzle Z offset and the nozzle cleaning. And the next thing is that there was no improvements to the adhesion, other than I was able to cleanly get under the pick with the scraper after some working. The first layer results are the same as before, porous and rough lines, with missing parts of the logo. It's in this clip that I also discover the other side of the build plate. The other side of the stock build plate is a mirror finish metal style. So my next attempt is with that side of the build plate. I thoroughly cleaned the mirror surface a few times with alcohol wipe downs, and I re-leveled the bed. And this is where I discovered the discrepancy in the last leveling. This leveling came back with the now average results of the low top right and a high bottom left. I also did the calibration on this print, so who knows what data it actually printed with, though it doesn't really matter. The result of trying to print on a completely smooth surface without any additives usually ends the same every time. I haven't done it very often, so it kind of slipped my mind. The result was a blob of plastic that would have been stuck to the print head if I had let it finished. Even the pre-extrusion line was barely holding on, which it did manage to print, though. A small note that I mentioned in this clip is that because of the bed material, the perceived heat is much greater, so probably try and avoid touching it while it's warmed up. Technically, they say that you're not supposed to touch the 3D printer when anything is hot, but I think a lot of us are too impatient for that, especially when you're doing troubleshooting such, as, such like we are with the Ender 3 V3 here right now. On the next test, I tried the mirror finish with the bed temps up to 70 rather than 60. I turned off the calibration and let it go. It's important for me to mention that while it can help to raise the temperature even higher to get better results, this build plate is magnetic. Therefore, there is a magnet on the build surface, and typically, around the 80 degrees Celsius mark, magnets start to lose magnetism. It's also in this clip that I mentioned that the Z offset never seems to remain constant in its auto calibration values. It was ranging from somewhere around negative 2.38 to negative 2.22. In terms of numbers, that's not a big variance, but in terms of 3D printing, that those numbers could be huge. So I let the print run through fully and caught it at the end. The print managed to, to start properly, however eventually the whole print did lift and start started to get dragged along with the print head. Next attempt, we clean the mirror finish again and coat it with hairspray. This was the solution that worked 95% of the time with a different but very similar build surface I used with my Ender 3 V2. It was also a mirror finish build plate that gave me many issues with adhesion, but hairspray could usually save me. I bought some of the cheapest stuff available, so I have Rave Mega Hold with a 4 out of 5 hold level. I honestly don't know if, if those extra definitions mean anything for our 3D printing purposes, but I included them anyway just in case. In a small clip, I mentioned that the bed cooling takes forever. It seems like this is not just the case for the, this bed surface, but the whole bed cooling system. When applying hairspray, I try to spray an amount towards the middle relative to the size of what you're going to be printing, and then spread it around with a paper towel. The hairspray will quickly harden or dry up with the heat, so try to make sure to remember to apply it before preheating or you know heating for your prints. So I cleaned the surface again and recoated it properly. Unfortunately, I don't remember what temperature I did this print at in the clip, so it was either 60 or 70 Celsius. The print lifted from the bed with ease, but the first layer surface seemed to have gotten a little worse, so a little more stringy and porous looking, and still missing the little logo bits. It's in this clip where I mentioned that I'm beginning to become frustrated with this printer. After taking some time to think, I decided to re-level the printer and re-slice the guitar pick to get a baseline to see where to go from there. So when I re-sliced the pick, I think I sliced it with the normal preset to try and change things up from there. 
While watching the baseline print, I discover the problem for my issue concerning why the logo won't fully print. It turns out that there's some retraction or something happening that is too too exaggerated or aggressive that's happening from the pre-extrusion line to the print. So it tries to start printing the logo, but there's just simply not plastic coming out of the nozzle. So because of that, I also notice that there is no skirt being printed with most of my prints. Since we may have a few first time 3D printer owners looking for some answers, I will explain what a skirt is. If you already know, skip a little bit ahead. When you're having adhesion issues, there are three main possible options. A skirt, a brim, and a raft. People oftentimes hate it will never use the, use brims or rafts unless pushed to the edge of what they really need to do to complete their print. But the skirt is a common addition to your prints as it doesn't affect the print in any way other than making the print time a little higher and using a little more plastic. What the skirt is, it's a little plastic ring that's extruded around your print. So I'm no expert. But the way I see it, the purpose of it is to get your plastic flowing properly before you get to the important stuff and to make sure your flow and adhesion is proper once again before you get to the important parts of your printing. With that mini lesson over, on the default setting for normal quality and creality print, under the build plate adhesion, the type is set to auto brim. This is a mistake in my opinion on Creality's part. What this setting will do, to my knowledge, is if your print is large enough or the slicer deems that your print needs a brim, it will simply add one. Bamboo Lab Slicer did this as well and slightly messed up one of my larger prints due to the nature of what a brim is. So with that being said, I set the setting to skirt and continued on. On this next attempt I did another baseline print but with the skirt this time and it's possible that I didn't recoat the bed with hairspray because the top of the pick was slightly messed up due to slight disadhesion. The logo worked almost completely but had some minor faults still. The real feat here was that we made progress with the first layer lines. They were much less porous and were close to being almost flat. The surface was still slightly rough and there were minor divots from under extrusion in a few areas. However, even with this progress I wasn't satisfied. Because even if I got the print to be perfect, in order for that side of the build plate to work, you have to keep coating with your adhesive solution. With my G10 Garolite plate, even if I had to use hairspray, it normally worked for around 5 prints. So my next logical decision was to bring over the G10 plate. This plate was designed for the Ender 3 V2, so it doesn't have the dents at the top for the alignment screws. What I didn't know is the alignment screws could actually be unscrewed from the printer. So I have some leveling results that are a little jank because of sitting on top of the leveling screws and being held down with my little screw clamps. So in my last video, I think I may have said that build plates are not interchangeable across Ender printers, and that simply isn't true with the newfound forbidden rat knowledge. It's also mentioned in these clips about my gripe with the fact that there's very little information displayed, and it's displayed almost none of the time. On my Ender 3 V2, I installed third-party firmware to make my BLTouch auto-leveling work properly, because much like right now, the Creality firmware was subpar and not functioning well and or properly. On that third party firmware, it displayed all important information at all times on the bottom of the screen, including the bed and nozzle temps, the Z offset height, which arguably isn't important to be displayed all at all times, however, is displayed on both machines. But what really pisses me off here is that the X, Y, and Z position coordinates are not displayed ever on the V3 and no info is displayed during the auto bed leveling on the V3 as well. This info would have helped me greatly in future tests in this video. So like I said, we've moved on to the G10, we have re-leveled the bed with some whack results because of the alignment screws, and now we are moving to printing. This was printed with normal temperatures and no additives. There were no issues getting the print off the bed, but there was a thick enough string connecting the brim to the main print, so they came off together. The first layer looks like the lines came together, however they didn't really connect well with the outer walls of the print, as well as the logo is still slightly crippled. Also there was a minor fault at the top of the print again where there is a slight divot at the top edge of the pick. As a side note, the rest of the layers are still coming out perfect. The next test, I put the build plate a little forward on the bed to get past the alignment screws, still not knowing they can be removed. It resulted in a somewhat flatter build area compared to the original levelings, and much flatter obviously compared to when it was sitting over the alignment screws. 
The only real anomaly was this somewhat tall spike on the X1, Y2 coordinate point on the level grid. A side note that was mentioned was that it's really frustrating how there's no way to exit or abort the leveling sequence except for to turn off the printer and turn it back on, and sitting through the whole thing takes a good chunk of time. The same issue can be said for resetting the printer's configuration. There's a button for that in the control menu right in between edit level data and printer info. Instead of there being an are you sure confirmation or anything of the sort when clicked, it just resets the whole printer back to factory state. So if you get a good leveling, make sure that you write it down because the end of 3v3 does not seem to be consistent in its auto leveling and it could be gone in a flash if you click that button. This is also where I mentioned that it's very frustrating that you can't up the leveling data point grid size. This is a feature where it allows the probe to collect more points of your bed and make a finer mesh to actually be able to tell where there are dips and hills in your print bed instead of getting a general guess like the 4x4 grid leaves our printers with. On the V2 with aftermarket firmware, you were able to go up, go up to a 9x9 grid size, which worked phenomenally. And that was on a printer that wasn't even meant to have auto bed leveling, unlike the V3 here. So back to the print results. I had done a few prints before the clip was recorded. We of course got great top layers, and we were having good first layers as well. However, we were still having issues with the logo and some minor gaps where the skin meets the walls. Because of prints, printing in the middle were going so well, I started to try and print some batch files. That meaning trying to print multiple at the same time in one print. However, this enlightened me to some new problems. For some reason, when I was printing more than one pick, the number on the face started to get a little over-extruded, as well as there's a strange line that would be put across the top layer of the pick. Of course, those issues could be most likely fixed with retraction adjustments. Another issue to look out for is Creality Print doesn't account for the, v for the Ender 3 V3's pre-extrusion line. So if you put something that will conflict with that line, the printer will simply try and print over it. I also mentioned in this clip that I'm hoping to get a print surface meant for this style of bed. I did some shopping before the clip trying to do some research about the bed. There were no beds that were specifically labeled as for the Ender 3 V3 at the time, but when I searched for the V3 beds on Amazon, it still came up with some results that looked compatible. This is because I don't think that this is the first time that Creality has used this bed alignment design. I think it might have been used on the, on the Ender 5 and a few other Ender models, but I'm not completely for sure. So, this next time I got a new bed. The bed leveling came out the same as usual, my first attempt at getting a purpose-built bed for this printer was a double-sided bed with one side having a gold yellowish textured PEI surface and the other side, the side I wanted to use, had a black PEO, minorly textured side. That meaning that it had a cool crystal design to the surface but wasn't pronounced enough to make the bottom surface of the print rough or gritty like a true textured surface would. I bought something like this for my Bamboo Labs P1P and it worked great, so I assumed it would for this printer too. I was wrong. Before we continue, I, th I need to mention that I started testing with my Polymaker Polymax PLA Plus filament. This is because that was the filament that I wanted the final product to be made out of. The first print, I forgot to clean the plate and I used no adhesives. It was a mess. The second print, I cleaned the plate and used no adhesives. It turned out the same. Next, I tried with hairspray. We got a batch print to complete, but the results were simply abysmal. The farther from the middle of the bed, the worse the prints turned out. In this clip I mentioned that I sent a message to Creality Support asking if there was a way to make the level grid bigger or if they plan to add this feature for the Ender 3 V3. I won't make you wait forever for the response like I did. Firstly, they came back after a day, which of course isn't that bad, with a video I had to download that was a bed leveling tutorial and asking for my product info like serial number, order info, and the to top off the greatest of copy paste email lines, they wanted a video of my issue. I didn't reply back for six days because I was so pissed off by this reply. I understand that some people can, can be technologically challenged, but I know how to level the bed, especially on this printer. And this was a simple general question about a printer type that was already stated. They don't need my info to provide this info. It wouldn't have been that hard whether I purchased a printer or not. So this is where I start getting really upset. Six days later, I get pissed off, find a serial number on my printer, take a picture of it, and type it into my email. I attach a screenshot of my Amazon order completion, and finally I tell them what I told you about them not needing a video and it being a simple question. 
That message was sent on September 26th, and I got a reply back on October 2nd. So it took them three to four business days to reply, five to six in total because of the weekend. What I received was this, word for word. Dear customer, thank you for your feedback. According to the problem you described, we sent you a separate video tutorial for leveling. Please refer to the video tutorial operation. So in summary, I slowly and plainly told them that they need to add the larger grid feature, and they told me to learn how to level the auto-leveling bed. So moving back to the tests again, I did another test batch. Keep in mind this is still with Hairspray and I changed to Polymax PLA+. We start by looking at the outermost printed pick, and it's atrocious. The next one in turned out much better, but it was still not nearly an acceptable print. It had a brown spot on it for the love of god, I don't even know how that happened. Next head turned out like most others had, rough lines with porous gaps. Finally the center was much like the last, but with finer gaps. Next test we move back to the Bamboo Labs green normal PLA filament. I re-leveled the bed and did the calibration before the print. I did forget, however, to clean or add hairspray. So on the outermost print, we got a messed up logo and outer wall, but the skin flow and wall combination were really good, so they started to come together very well. It had the crystalline finish I wanted and was completely smooth. So other than a few other problem areas, I was finally starting to be impressed. The next one came out pristine. It was beautiful. Other than there was another poo-poo stain on it, I still don't really know where that came from, but you know, it was kind of persistent. The next one came out the same, only better because it didn't have a stain on it, and the middle one came out basically perfect. In the clip I mentioned that it might be a little overpressed down, which is supported by my slight difficulty trying to pull the middle off of the build plate. It's also in this clip where I got the serial number reply back from Creality and I'm expressing quite a bit of anger with the company and the printer at the end of the clip. I expressed my anger with the machine stating something like the printer isn't delivering on what it claims to, referring to the auto leveling. Let me mention that on the store page for the build plate, it mentions that the PEO, the side that I was using, was meant only for PLA and the PEI side was, is for everything else. So to defend myself a bit here, one, I don't remember or understand why it can only be used for PLA and the store didn't really mention why. And two, Polymaker's PLA Plus doesn't print much different than a normal PLA does. Or at least it shouldn't. The PLA Plus printed the same as the Bamboo Labs normal PLA on the P1P. So at this point I'm talking about returning the bed because it simply doesn't work for what I need it for but I did try the other side of the plate to see what it would feel and look like. I still use the normal PLA with 60 degrees Celsius bed temps and no additives. The outermost print turned out perfect, quote unquote. I say that with quotation marks because there are no visible gaps or lines, but that's because they are melded together by the texturing, which is obviously abundant. Because of that texturing, I know that if I tried to sell the pick as a product, I know that people would complain about the scratchy nature on their strings for one reason or another. All of the prints turned out the same. This is also where I saw another person's review of this printer, and they mentioned that you can take out the bed screws. So now I'm armed with that power. All that being said, I have to go off memory from here because I stopped doing clips, and my memory isn't great of all the minor details. So I returned that bed because like I said before, it just simply wasn't capable of doing what I needed it to. I then bought a different double sided bed because it was the right size, but it didn't have the alignment notches. Of course, armed with my new knowledge, that is irrelevant. This bed was a textured PEI and light textured PET. PET is like PEO, but with a carbon fiber style design rather than the crystal style. This is what I wanted from the start because it was the same style that was on my P1P, I just didn't get it because I didn't know about the alignment screws. So my logic here is that uh, it's going to work for sure because it worked so well on my P1P, right? Wrong. It functioned the same, possibly even worse than the last bed. So I returned that one as well. Now I'm getting lost, pissed off, and confused. In my previous experiences, the build surface changed the game, but not this time. So now out of desperation, I'm going to Reddit, trying to see what other people are saying, other than all the positive reviews on YouTube just talking about the specs. 
Turns out there's a, already a subreddit specifically for the Ender 3 V3 SE. And on it, if someone's not posting about how cool what they printed on it is, it's someone else saying that they're having all sorts of different adhesion issues. Let me say that it's a slight breath of fresh air to know that I'm not the only one having these problems, but at the same time, a lot of people are having adhesion issues. At this point, it's becoming clear to me that this printer is too early in its life cycle, and Creality has a lot of work ahead of them. It was around this time that I was really considering returning this printer. I wasn't finding answers, and I was nearing the cutoff point for my return. In the end, I decided to keep the printer because of the possibility of what it could be. So, I really started to try and dig deep looking for answers out of desperation and frustration. Let me tell you that it was hard because this printer is really demotivating me. I'm kind of in a depressive slump and this printer is a real big reason why. So let's talk about what I found on Reddit. First of all, I made a post on the V3 subreddit. Utterly unhelpful. One person asked questions about some more specifics and then disappeared, never to be heard from again. Radio silence on that post since then. So I moved to trying to search through the previous posts and scrolling through and reading. Of course, most of the time suggestions are unrelated or they're just asking about their situation again. I did find one piece of info that wasn't helpful for me, but was interesting. It was that someone was obviously having leveling issues, and what one of the suggestions was, was that he should loosen one of the sides of the Z-axis. There are these little grub screws at the top. What that would allow them to do is they could try and re-level their entire Y-axis because it was possibly slightly slanted. In the end, it fixed that guy's problem, but it's not what's happening to me. So, once again, I turned to Reddit for answers, and it was just utterly unhelpful. Now we're on to the true frustrations that came from this project. I was out of options, so I decided to watch the leveling tutorial and follow it to the word. So strike one on this is making me download the video in the first place. Not having it provided somewhere like on YouTube, you know one of the simplest solutions that people usually have. Strike two is they didn't get someone to narrate it. You have to try and follow along with the captions and the video while there's this really distracting piano music happening. I muted the audio. So I'm following every step until they get to this point. The point where they say to use a test print of your choosing. Then they say to adjust each level point accordingly. Strike three. I forgot to mention in the script in the video, but in the crea the video that Creality sent me, it specifically says to keep the calibration off. If you provide the calibration ability and you can't even stand by it enough that it's going to be useful, I think there's an issue. I know why they say not to use it during this scenario, because it isn't helping and you need to manually adjust the leveling data, but still, I think that that's a little, you know, that's a little, it kind of shows what is happening here. If even the pre-calibration thing isn't working properly, there's kind of an issue here. Those two segments led me to some more glaring issues. One, I have never seen anyone make a 4x4 data point bed leveling tool. Two, I couldn't find anyone who made that, that kind of bed leveling tool. And three, I couldn't find anywhere where Creality provided that bed leveling tool. So there's a process of what happened next. On October 4th, I sent a message to Creality support asking them if they would be able to send me that leveling file shown in the tutorial video. I wait, I sit, I wait. I'm thinking, I'm frustrated. I start thinking more, I'm gonna do it myself. Easier said than done, right? First of all, I pretty much hate CAD software now. The only ones I've used are FreeCAD and Tinkercad, but they both upset me for different reasons. So I'm in FreeCAD trying to make this model. It has 17 data points, the 16 necessary ones that, you know, are pointed on the printer and the center. I don't always understand why every little thing has to be so difficult in FreeCAD, but it is. So long story of the creation later, I spent a whole day designing this frickin' bed leveling tool. Here's where the Creality would have done me a huge favor by having the X, Y, and Z available and viewable at all times. The probe doesn't probe at the minimum printable area, so it's up to me to estimate where it's going to actually probe. 
here's the process for trying to align my data grid. One, you need an initial level to get something on the bed without breaking anything. Two, you need to print what you think is the right size for your data grid. Three, run level test over your printed bed test to check the accuracy. Four, wait for the frickin' printer to do the Z offset thing for like the fifth time. It does it so many times where it's trying to figure out what level it is, and I believe that it's slightly my fault because when you're doing this test, you if if it has if it's detecting something in the way with the nozzle when it's doing its Z offset calibration compared to the probe in the middle in the center of the print, then it kind of you know messes up. So it's sitting here doing it over and over and over again, just doing the freaking Z offset thing. It's so annoying. Five, as the level process is happening, either estimate how far off you are or try to measure the distance from the center of a data point and then the probe with calipers to still only have an estimate on how far off you are. Six, shrink model size in slicer according to your estimate. Seven, don't forget to press cool down on your printer. Eight, wait for the printer to cool down. Nine, peel off old bed model. Ten, print again. 11. Repeat too many long annoying steps until the model is correct. An optional twelfth step is to realize that the measurement for your inner data points are off and regret even trying. <laughs> so that was a long-winded way of saying that it takes forever to do one test of the bed leveling tester and in the end it never would have even been correct because I can't figure out the proper gap between the probes. So like I said, the probe doesn't go to the complete printable area, and sometime along the way, on October 9th, I was emailed the official Creality bed leveling test. This means three to four business days, or four to five days including the weekend. While that wasn't a long time for them to take to send me this stuff, it was agony because I'm trying to fix this freaking thing. So now I have the official leveling test, and bam, we're done here, right? STILL WRONG! There's a few issues with their test. The first being they sent the model only in G-code. For those who may not know, most times when you download a model, it comes in an STL. This is so you can alter the model if needed to, like if you need to make it bigger or if you need to rotate the model. After those adjustments are made in the slicer, you can slice the model into layers so that the printer knows what to do. Those layers are the G-code file. Here we only have the G-code, so it's unalterable. Logically, this wouldn't be an issue, however, I have wasted a lot of plastic on this printer trying to fix it, as well as it takes about 20 minutes to complete the full model. So my point here is that if I already have some points that are level and some others that aren't, I want to take out the unnecessary points and save my time in plastic, but I can't. We haven't even gotten to the main issue yet, if you can believe it. I printed the model and more than half the pro points are misaligned. Only about three points are completely centered. And let's not forget, this was sent to me by Creality as G-code. The only way I could mess this up is with slicer settings, and there's no way to fix that with, fix the misalignment with slicer settings, as far as I know at least. So unless Creality changes something in the firmware, it's almost impossible to truly level the bottom row of data points as it, par as it probes at the very bottom of the printable area. So in conclusion, for now this data point system is as good as it gets. Everyone's printer problem is a little different from the next, so all these solutions mentioned could fix your printer. But right now, it looks like the majority of the Ender 3 V3s simply can't do the first bullet point on its Amazon store. Level itself worry-free. Maybe some people's can, but for the rest of us, for now, here we are. You know, this journey has really changed my view on this printer. Even at the end of my actual review, I wasn't sure if I could recommend this printer. Now I can safely say, no. No, I can't. At least for now. Nothing as far as I can tell is mechanically wrong with the printer majority of the time. It just doesn't seem to know what to do with the data it's getting. And even if it did know, the data might not be enough. This was still probably a long video, but I felt everything said in this video was important. 
There's been a lot of anger, pain, and sadness in the making of this informational video. So, if you found this informational, helpful, or even a little enchanting somehow, please leave a like. This is a music channel, so normally I cover guitars, pedals, amps, and some drum stuff. But every other video I try and do something a little different. There's been a lot of 3D printer stuff lately, but that's because that's what's important to me right now. So, if any of that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing. That's all I have to say for now, and I'm going to say, bye bye